OK, so we're going to differentiate x to the 1 over n from first principles, where n is a positive integer and here x has to be positive, so that x to the 1 over n is well defined. Now our most natural approach here might be to use the binomial theorem and look at the series expansion of x plus h to the 1 over n. The approach we're going to use here doesn't include any infinite series, so it uses more elementary tools. We'll prove some inequalities of this quantity before we take limits. So for our first step, I actually find it a little bit awkward to work with the powers of 1 over n. So just to begin with, we'll replace x plus h to the 1 over n by a, and we'll replace x to the 1 over n by b. So this is nice for our terms in the denominator then, because then x plus h is just going to be a to the power of n, and similarly x is b to the n. So the quantity we're interested in is the limit, as h goes to 0, of a minus b over a to the n, minus b to the n. But now before we take limits, I'm actually going to be interested in the reciprocal of this. So we'll be interested in a to the n minus b to the n over a minus b. It turns out it's slightly nicer to work with the reciprocal, and then we'll take the reciprocal again before taking limits. So we could, using polynomial division, we could divide a to the n minus b to the n over a minus b, and we get a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 times b plus lots more terms, eventually we have a plus a times b to the n minus 2, and finally plus b to the n minus 1. So I'll write this with sigma notation, just so it's a little bit more concise. So this becomes the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of a to the n minus 1 minus k times b to the k. So now let's write this in terms of our original expressions with x plus h and x, then we've got something where we can prove some inequalities. So we'll still have the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1, but remember a was x plus h to the 1 over n, so we've got x plus h to the 1 over n to this power, so I'll write it as n minus 1 minus k over n, and b was x to the 1 over n, so we write b to the k as x to the k over n. So now we'll prove some upper and lower bounds on this quantity, and then eventually we'll take limits. Now for our upper and lower bounds, we're actually going to split into two cases, depending on if h is positive or negative. So if we only consider positive h, you would just get the right derivative, and similarly if you had h negative, you would just get the left derivative. So we need both cases in order to fully have the derivative of this function. So starting when h is greater than or equal to 0, this tells us that x plus h is greater than or equal to x, but it also tells you that for any positive power p, x plus h to the p is going to be greater than or equal to x to the power of p. So this is nice because you can check all of the terms here have positive powers in our sum. So just rewriting the sum then, we've got the sum of x plus h to the power of n minus 1 minus k all over n times x to the k over n. I just call this star. We're going from k equals 0 to n minus 1. So then for an upper bound, we know that each of the x to the p terms are less than or equal to our x plus h to the p terms. So we can say that this is actually less than or equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of x plus h. We leave these terms alone, n minus 1 minus k over n. But then we replace our x terms by the slightly larger x plus h to the k over n. So this is nice because now you've got x plus h to the k over n you've also got x plus h to the minus k over n. So these two terms cancel out, and you're left with something where there's no dependence on k in your sum. So all you're left with then is n copies, we're going from 0 up to n minus 1, of x plus h to the power of n minus 1 over n. So this is our first upper bound for our quantity we're interested in. So similarly, we can use a lower bound. We know that all of our x plus h terms are greater than or equal to our x terms, so this is actually going to be greater than or equal to the same sum, but where we replace all of our x plus h terms just by x. So you'll have x to the n minus 1 minus k all over n, and also x to the k over n. So just like before, our k over n terms cancel, and we're left with n copies now of x to the power of n minus 1 over n. So we can conclude that our quantity we're interested in, before we take limits, this is bounded from above by n x plus h to the n minus 1 over n, and it's also bounded from below by n x to the n minus 1 over n.
So you see this is going to be really useful now for when we take limits, but first we'll prove some similar bounds, not when h is positive, but when h is negative. So when h is negative, we essentially just get the reverse of all of our previous inequalities. So we can say that x plus h is going to be less than or equal to x, and similarly, if we take, because x has to be positive, we can take h small enough that x plus h is still positive. So then we can apply this same argument now, where any positive power of x is going to be greater than any positive power of x plus h. So then we can apply this to each of the terms in our sum that we're interested in. So for our upper bound, we know that each of our x plus h terms can be bounded from above by our x terms. So we can just replace each of these by an x term, which would then give us as our upper bound, we're less than or equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1, where we just replace all x plus h's by x. So you'd have x to the power of n minus 1 minus k over n plus a k over n. So like before, our k terms would cancel and we're just left with x to the n minus 1 over n. So this gives us n copies of x to the n minus 1 over n. And similarly, for our lower bound, we know that all of our x terms are bounded from below by x plus h. So you'd have the same sum now. Once again, with the cancellation of the powers of k, you would just end up with x plus h to the n minus 1 over n, which gives us n copies of x plus h to the n minus 1 over n. So we can conclude then that with our lower bound of n x plus h to the n minus 1 over n, this is less than or equal to the quantity we're interested in. If I write it now in its original form, the reciprocal of the thing, which we want to take limits with our x plus h to the 1 over n minus x to the 1 over n, and it's bounded from above by n, x to the n minus 1 over n. So now we're ready to, in each different case where h is positive or negative, take limits to evaluate the right and left derivatives. So first we'll go back to the case where h is positive to find the right derivative. So we're interested in the limit as h tends to 0 from above, which will indicate that this plus of not quite this fraction, but it's reciprocal, so x plus h to the 1 over n minus x to the 1 over n all over x plus h minus x, which is of course just h in the denominator. So now previously we had an upper bound, but because we're taking reciprocals of everything, this upper bound, now its reciprocal is going to become our lower bound. So we end up with our new lower bound as the limit as h tends to 0 from above of the reciprocal of our previous upper bound, so 1 over n. Then we'll write this, instead of 1 over, we'll just take the negative of the power. So it's 1 over n times x plus h to the 1 minus n over n. So that's our lower bound. And we can also get an upper bound by taking the reciprocal of the previous lower bound, which doesn't even depend on h. So we can just say that this is less than or equal to 1 over n times x to the 1 minus n over n, where once again, we've just taken the negative of the power. So we've taken the reciprocal. And you can see here, our lower bound is actually going to converge as h tends to 0 to the exact same thing as our upper bound. So this is enough then to say that the limit we're interested in from h approaching from above is going to be equal to our 1 over n x to the 1 minus n all over n. So just to spell this out, our right derivative then is equal to 1 over n x to the 1 minus n all over n, as we would expect. And finally, we need to calculate the left derivative, which is where h is less than or equal to 0. So we're interested in the limit as h tends to 0 from below, which we indicate with this minus sign of the reciprocal of this quantity. So x plus h to the 1 over n minus x to the 1 over n all over x plus h minus x, which is, of course, just h. So just like before, to get our new lower bound, we need to take the reciprocal of the upper bound because the inequality signs change when we take reciprocals. So there's no need to include the limit because this is just a constant. We take the reciprocal of the n, we get 1 over n, and the reciprocal of our x term is once again x to the 1 minus n over n, just taking the negative of the power. And our upper bound is now going to be the reciprocal of our previous lower bound. So including the limit now as h tends to 0 from below, we've got 1 over n times x plus h, once again to the power of 1 minus n all over n. And then you can see that taking limits as h goes to 0, just like before, we get on both sides our limit we're interested in is bounded between 1 over n, x to the 1 minus n over n, and something which converges to 1 over n, x to the 1 minus n over n. So the limit as h tends to 0 from below, our left derivative, 
of our function x to the 1 over n is indeed equal to the right derivative. So this tells us then that our function is differentiable and its derivative at any point x is equal to 1 over n x to the 1 minus n over n. So we can conclude then from first principles that the derivative of x to the 1 over n is equal to 1 over n times x to the 1 minus n all over n, or you may prefer to write this now as 1 over n times x to the 1 over n minus 1, where we just take the minus n over n and turn that into a minus 1.